Moving forward, we're going to look here at a couple of important and related attributes when we begin a project. One, we're going to look at setting up a project so that it has the sonic fidelity that you require. And two, we'll look at the importance of setting up your sound card and hardware to work with Cubase so that we hear the different tracks through our monitors or headphones. Let's begin with selecting a template again from the recording option here. Notice that many of these templates refer to specific Steinberg hardware units. I use a UR44 and a UR22. However, even if you choose one of these templates that is labelled with a different hardware unit, you can still make it work with whatever you own. For example, this template is specifically for the UR44C. Now at the moment I don't have my UR44 connected, instead I have my UR22 connected. Nevertheless, let's choose the UR44 template, hit create and navigate to where we want to save this project. Now after a moment I'm informed there are missing ports to allow this project to be heard. And this is because I have my UR22C connected at present, rather than my UR44. However, it's a simple process to correct this. I'll explain the term ports first. Ports are the input and output channels Cubase uses to connect to the hardware, in my case my UR22C. To be able to connect a microphone or an instrument to Cubase and record, we need to specify input ports that my connected UR22C uses. At present we see Cubase is unmapped to the input and output ports. Now it's important to be aware this does not refer to the physical cables being unconnected. The relevant XLR and jack cables are connected. It's simply that Cubase believes a UR44C is being used, as opposed to the UR22C. And as a result, Cubase will not connect. So let's rectify this. Click on the first missing port, and then now choose the correct input port for the UR22C. This is input 1, and I'll do the same for input 2. There are checkboxes here if you want Cubase to always remember this remapping for future projects. In other words, should you choose a UR44 template with a UR22 connected. Now, really I should set up the output ports too, so that we can hear the audio coming out of Cubase into our monitors or headphones. However, I'll purposely not do that at present, because I want to show you another method of connecting once the project is running. I'll click OK to create the project, and here it is. Right, Cubase has a number of playback controls available. One such option is this floating panel of playback buttons. Though I don't need to see it because identical controls can be found at the foot and up top. So I'll click its close down cross to hide this floating panel. OK, so what do we have now? That template created these tracks with relevant effects added. For example, for the electric guitar track, we see a guitar amp simulator inserted here, so that any dry guitar signal passes through the effect. And an effect send is here too. So the template set all this up for us. We didn't have to manually do this. Incidentally, you can save your own templates, but we'll look at that another time. For now, let's go back to ensuring the input and output ports work as they should. Remember we set up the input ports a moment ago, and this is confirmed here where it states audio inputs connected. Clicking on connected opens this audio connections floating panel that allows us to adapt what we have set up so far. That's the inputs tab. I'll select the outputs tab now. Of course, we are informed the output ports are presently not connected. Under audio device here, I'll click and then choose the relevant ASIO driver. The ASIO driver is a piece of software that connects the software to the hardware. It got installed when you installed Cubase. As a consequence, Cubase automatically establishes the correct left and right output ports for my UR22C. So, all done. And I'll close that. And this is now confirmed here. We are connected. Another thing that you might want to do at this point is set up the fidelity of your project. At present, the recording is set to 44.1 kHz and 24-bit. That's good enough, I suppose. But if you want further fidelity, click here and choose a different setting. Now, I always set this to 32-bit float. That's better for my needs. It will mean larger audio files are created, but I prefer the higher fidelity sonics of it. Right, let's pause here and move forward again. Now that we have set up our inputs and outputs and adapted the bit rate if required. 